Welcome to Combative Wing Chun. Today we'll show you three most dangerous Wing Chun techniques. Three most dangerous Wing Chun techniques. We're gonna show it to you one by one right now. Technique number one is called Biuji. Translated in Chinese is thrusting fingers. This is such an important technique that in Wing Chun, the whole third form is named after this technique called Biuji. So we're going to show you exactly how to use it and why it's so effective in self-defense. Here's some reasons why Biuji or spear hand is so effective. The first reason is targeting. We, used to, we want to use the Biuji to attack the eyes which are very sensitive. It doesn't matter how much you lift weights, you can't make your eyes stronger, right? So we attack the eyes. It doesn't matter how strong he is, how big he is, everybody's eyes are weak. And especially if you have strong fingers, it will definitely devastate your opponent. Another target you can aim for is the throat. So those are very important targets that will devastate any opponent regardless of their size because you can't train your Adam's apple, you can't train your trachea, and you can't train your eyeballs. So that's a really good reason why the beauty is so effective. Another reason is because it has distance. This is the longest distance from you to your attacker. Notice that he's stretching out his, out, uh, his hand out completely. Even if he turns it, it's the same distance. Doesn't matter which way he turns it, okay? Now, look at, look at my fingers. I can reach his eyes, but he can't reach my face. The reason is because when you open your fingers and you open your hands, you have an extra three to four inches distance and length in your spear. Most people will punch and will not use a spear. So when you're doing this, you have that extra advantage of using the maximum distance of your weapon, which is your spear hand. Another reason why it's so effective is because it has speed. We're not winding up for a big punch and we're not getting ready for a big kick, which requires a lot of body movement. We're just lifting the hand and simply extending it, which is one of the fastest movements you can use on, on your attacker. So we're gonna show you exactly how to use the technique most effectively. Now you see a lot of Wing Chun techniques videos that talk about BG, but very few of them will show you exactly how to use your hand for the maximum power. So we're gonna show you how to use your hand so that you don't damage your hand and also you get the most power into your beauty. Tip number one is to make sure that your fingers are curved like this in an arc. Slightly, not like this, but slightly curved. The reason is because when your fingers go like this and you hit something with your target, it's easily to hyperextend your fingers and potentially break your fingers. So make sure that your fingers are slightly curved like this. Tip number two is make sure that your fingers are close together and they're not spread apart. If you're going to do spread apart, make sure that you don't make full contact because if you just, if you spread apart your fingers, you're most likely going to hit the target with only one finger. And one finger is definitely not as strong as four fingers. So keep your fingers together. Tip number three is to make your thumb and fingers all point in the same direction. Some people like to do BG with the thumb tucked in like this but I find that if you put your thumb and point it in the same direction, you actually add to the direction and the force of all the fingers combined. So those are some tips in order to add more power and more safety to your thrusting fingers. Here's some cautions and reminders for you if you're gonna be training this with a partner. Make sure your partner has nice eye protection because this can seriously damage somebody's eyes if you don't do it without eye protection. So make sure you get some goggles like this. They're not that expensive. It can be ski goggles, it could be um, eye protection goggles for work, or it could be um, even a motorcycle helmet. Just make sure that if you do put full force into it, that it does not damage your partner. Another word of caution for application wise is while you're doing the beauty, notice that I also lift this hand up here as a guard. The reason is because I don't know if he's gonna punch at the same time. So that if he punches at the same time, at least you have something here to protect your face if he does hit you at the same time. Now this is very useful because it can block in many directions. If he's coming around this way, I can use it to block up on this way. If he's doing a back fist, I can use it to block it out that way. If he's coming in out for an uppercut, I can block it down. 
Okay, and I can also lift up with it and open this up. Okay, so this is a very important guard. And in the future, I'm going to show you how to use this guard, the rear guard in the BUG, the most effectively. But for now, just make sure that you put your hands up here, right behind your BUG, so that you have a guard, like a shield, and you also have a spear, a spear and your shield. Let's first show you the stance that you need in order to make this the most effective. We want to start with a fairly narrow stance. The reason is because once we make a very really wide stance, what does it do? It warns them that you're about to attack. So you want to start with a fairly narrow stance, maybe just half a step back. Second tip is that you want to be weighted forward so that you're ready to pounce. Just like as a tiger is ready to attack its prey, you want to be weighted forward so that your momentum and your center of gravity is forward and it's easy to launch straight without any wind-up. The reason you want to keep your weight forward is because you want to be like a tiger. You want to be able to pounce in a microsecond. Now that we talked about the right stance, now we can talk about the hands. The hands will start with a hands down position, like I mentioned, and you want to lift them up like this. Just casually like this. The reason we do this is we don't want to chamber. We don't want to chamber the hands. We don't want to chamber the hands. This is chambering. This will telegraph or tell your attacker to get attack. But if you do this, it's very hard to see, especially in his point of view, that I'm about to attack. It just looks like I'm about to raise my hands. It's very non-threatening. So that's the second, that's the first movement. The second movement is once you get to here, is to rotate your body and then extend the spear out towards your target. So if you combine them together, it'll be one, two, but blend them together. We don't want to make it very mechanical, like one, two, one, two, that's too mechanical. So you want to blend it together. Raise it up casually, then extend. Raise up casually, extend. That's a slow motion. Notice that both hands will go up at the same time, and then we rotate. Both hands go up at the same time, and then we rotate. Now the third step is to do it at the same time as your pounce. So remember we did our pounce, which is pounce, it's just a small one, pounce, pounce. Now we're going to do it at the same time. So as soon as you lift your hands, we're going to pounce, pounce, <laughs> pounce. So you're going to do this, pouncing, pouncing, and then spear. So. Okay, so this is a training for target practice. Okay. Okay, so that's how you combine the three techniques into one. Let's show you how to use Beauty fighting speed. Technique number two is the chain blast, also called the Guanqun in Chinese, translated chain punches. Why it's so effective? It's because it's so fast, doesn't give your time, doesn't give time for your attacker to block everything and to react. It's used as a suppressive fire technique, just like a machine gun, and it's very effective. I'm gonna show you how to use it properly and even more reasons why it's so effective. Stay tuned. Some cautions about the chain punch is that even though it's such an effective technique, it also has some disadvantages. The disadvantage is that it's a short distance. And also, it doesn't have as much power as a big punch. We were sacrificing power for speed, and we're sacrificing the distance also for speed. So those are some warnings. You don't want to use it in a long distance because you cannot reach your partner. And you don't want to use it as a finishing move because it's not strong enough to um, knock out your opponent. So those are some warnings for you. 
regarding the chain blast. The first target is the chin. Second target is as the chin starts opening up and lifting up, now he's exposed his throat. Now if he leans back like this, now it might be too far for you to reach, to reach his throat. But now this is close, you can hit his ribs here. So you can hit the ribs. Or if he's facing you more square, you can hit the solar plexus. Okay? And as he starts buckling again, you can lift it up and then do this. And when that goes back, you can hit here. And when that comes back, you can lift it up and do like this. Okay? So you can keep changing the target, solar plexus, chin, and throat. This is the center line of the opponent, and this is where you can attack. Now notice that in the sequence I showed you in the demo, we used it right after this, the spear. It's because right when the spear comes up, it's very typical for him to block his face because he just got hit in the face, okay? This is very good for using the chain blast because now you can cut in underneath his guard, or if his hands are lower, you cut in over his guard. So that as you're punching, you're actually defending yourself from being hit from his hands. So here, 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 here. Okay? So either if his hands are up, you go in between his guard. If his hands are down, then you go over his guard. So there's an added defense and offense in this attack. And it works very well right after this. Because when that happens, his hands are going to cover his face. When you get him in the eyes, you're just going to naturally cover your face. Okay, so which opens here, ribs, right? Now the face, 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 ribs, face, 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 ribs. See how I'm always changing the target? Because I don't want to always be chasing the head. There's other openings that come in. But it's very hard for the opponent to be able to counter your attack while blocking everything because they're coming in in a very fast speed, which we will demonstrate in the next section. Here's a fighting speed demonstration of how to use the chain bus. Are you ready for technique number three? We're going to show you the sidekick. Let's get started. We're gonna show you the side kick. And the reason why side kick is so effective is because it has a long distance, okay? Next to the spear, the side kick is the weapon that also has the longest distance. That's one reason why it's so effective. Second of all, it's very easy to learn. Pretty much every martial arts has something similar to the side kick. Now in Wing Chun, most of the side kicks are done down low to the knee, which are very devastating. If you're going to be training that, make sure that your partner has proper um, knee protection. I recommend thick hockey pads for your knees. So right now, we're going to be doing a side kick. The side kick can be targeted in about three different places which are very effective. The first one is the knee. The second one is the ribs, but depending if it's open or not. Right now, he's not open, not open, so it's hard for me to get in there, but let's say that is open up like this, then I can hit his ribs. All right. The third target, which I don't recommend, is the head. But only use it when he's leaning forward, because then I can reach his head. Otherwise, if he's leaning back, I won't be able to reach it. All right. So those are some tips of using a sidekick. Now, the sidekick that we're going to be showing you is the lead foot sidekick. There's two kinds of sidekicks. There was the lead foot and the rear foot sidekick. We're gonna use the lead foot one because it's faster. Instead of using the rear foot, which I have to bring it up to the front and then kick, I use the lead foot, which I just have to lift it straight up from, from where it is. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the footwork that we use, and that is from Bruce Lee, of how to use the footwork to do, you do the lead side kick. Now that you know the footwork, next is the actual kick. So once you lift the foot up, you wanna have your knee up like this, it's about level, parallel to the ground, and extend. At the same time, you want to shuffle or rotate your foot so that your heel is turned towards your opponent. Okay? If you do this, it's okay too, but you don't have as much power. 
But as soon as you turn your heel this way, it adds more power to your kick. So we're going to go to the shuffle step. If you flip up, and as you kick, you can shuffle your heel to turn towards it. So that's the action. So as you kick, you extend your foot, you shuffle your foot, your heel towards it, like that. So you combine together, like that. Notice that as I bring my foot back, it finishes up another pendulum. So this pendulum kicks back the other foot. Kicks back the other foot. So for training, this is the way you can practice. Pendulum up, kick. Pendulum back, guard position. Pendulum up, kick. Pendulum up, back. Kick, back. Kick, back. Kick, back. Where do you want to put your hands? You want to keep your hands as a threat to him, so you can either keep it up here, so he keeps it as a threat, and the other hand you can just put back here, just like in the spear position. Okay, so you take the knee, you can try different targets, pick the ribs, and in this case I wouldn't kick the head because you can just easily block it. So you can practice those three targets. If it's too hard for you, just start with the low one. Very effective already. People don't do it in uh, martial arts sparring situations because it's so dangerous. You can dislocate somebody's knee. So if you do train this, make sure you have hockey pads. Right now I'm just touching it with the leg. I'm not gonna go full force or even half force to this knee because it's gonna really damage somebody's knee. Here's how to use a side kick fighting speed. So there you have it. We have the three most dangerous Wing Chun techniques. Number one is the finger jab or the beauty. Ooh. Number two is the chain blast or the chain punch. Number three is the side kick. Wah! Those are the three most dangerous Wing Chun techniques. Thanks for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you click the subscribe button and click the bell next to the subscribe button so you get instant notification of all the latest and greatest Wing Chun videos and self-defense tips that you can get on this channel almost on a daily basis. So make sure you also comment and like and tell and share it with your friends. Tell us what you think about this video, which is your favorite technique. I'm looking forward to all your comments in this video. We'll see you soon in the next lesson.